advocacy on this. Um, thank you, council members. Item number five is a public hearing to amend uh, Chapter 191 or Vehicle and Traffic Law related to a clarification um, regarding rules for uh, towing vehicles. Um, I'll offer the floor to the Corporation Council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in your packet is the proposed local law. Essentially, it's uh, letter B under Section 1 that's being added, uh, which says it shall be unlawful to and no motor vehicle may be parked on any public street or parking area for more than 48 consecutive hours. Any automobile found to be parked in any public street or parking area for more than 48 consecutive hours <coughs> may be removed by the police department of the city of Rye or its duly authorized agent and impounded and such removal and any related charges thereto shall be paid by such owner, his agent or representative. Right now that provision is not in our local code. Therefore, the state law which exists in section 1224 of the um, uh, vehicle and traffic law would, would be applicable if there were to be any need to take any action by law enforcement. And that particular statute requires that there be a, uh, a summons or a violation or a ticket given to the vehicle and the 48 hours runs from that time frame. So what we're trying to do is to give the police department the authority to um, uh, monitor and remove vehicles that may be abandoned. And, and this issue comes up in our community in um, most broadly in two circumstances. One where we have in the summer, the summer parking rules regarding um, near Playland and Rye Town Park. And in the winter we have um, no overnight parking um, um, in all of the community except um, around the uh, Davis Avenue and the apartment building there. Um, and uh, any comments and questions from council people to start off? Okay, one very, just a quick question for my own information. Is, is 191.22A currently in our code and B is simply a supplement or is A original as well? A is in our code. So A is already there. Basically, we're focusing on B. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Other questions and comments from council members? Uh, Joe? Uh, I, I mean, I, I think uh, I don't know how to start this discussion, but it, it, it's evident to me that this particular uh, statute is aimed at a particular situation that we've all seen around town. And, uh, and that's fine in my book. Um, but I think it, it, if it is, I think we should just acknowledge that because I think we're creating a bigger problem by trying to address another problem. Um, I, I think that you know, whether you agree or not with, with the floating mobile, you know, I, I think the problem people have is that something with advertisement on it is parked near your home, near your places of worship. So I don't care whether it's floaty or tied detergent. I, you know, I just think that advertising something near churches and homes is, is just you know, is distasteful to me. However, I totally respect someone's <coughs> First Amendment right to do something like that. So, you know, my, my idea would be to, instead of saying you can't park on the street for 48 hours or more, and, and by, by affecting one person, you're affecting a whole, you're affecting the entire city of Rye. And this really, in my view, is not a problem. It has not been a problem uh, that is widely recognized. People aren't complaining about it. You know, and you do have people that do need to park on the street for more than 48 hours in a row uh, for, for purposes other than promoting a cause. Um, so I, I, would, I would be against this particular legislation for that purpose. But what I would be in favor of is something, you know, to approach this issue with a scalpel rather than a, a sledgehammer and say, look, if you want to promote something like that, that's fine. You know, you're entitled to do it. 
but why don't we limit it to say like the central business district sorry Catherine but someplace where people normally come and go and you expect to see advertisements for stores and, and other things for sale um, and I think Kevin you could on a First Amendment basis uh, do that zone for that uh, just like you know when you have uh, like strip clubs you know you, you can't have them you, can, you can't bar them from your community but what you can do is you can legislate that they have to be in certain locations so you can't you can't legislate as to content but you can you know legislate as to uh, you know manner time and place so uh, you know I, I was reluctant to start talking about this because you know you know issues like this you know the more oxygen you give them the you know the more they live but you know since it's on our agenda I, I didn't see how we could not address it so you know I, I don't know if, if any of that makes sense uh, to anyone else on the council but but I throw it out there so my, my my suggestion is that we don't do it this way and, and you can disagree that that's what we're doing but in my view it is instead of doing it this way do it another way which I think allows everyone to do what they want to do it, it spares people in their homes and, and churches from having to look at any advertisement and it permits someone who wants to make a statement whether you agree with it or not uh, to be able to do it I'll just be very quick I don't know where you got that Joe but this has nothing to do with a, a particular individual's car there's an ambiguity in state law that unless clarified by local law means that if the police need to tow a vehicle they have to wait I'm told not 48 hours which would be our practice but 96 hours and this is meant to deal with that situation and no other so I guess you read a newspaper article and assume that that's what this is about no I look around Steve I look around and you know, well, this is like uh, a, a pitcher throwing me, this is like a pitcher throwing a high and hard fastball and then saying I wasn't throwing at you, the guy's head you, I mean, that's, you, that's you've interrupted me excuse me I have the floor um, there's been no discussion of this related to um, the, the car in question that you're talking about. It has to do with a piece of state law where there is an ambiguity, and the way you clarify this is with what is in this proposal. Most communities in Westchester, a number of our neighboring communities, actually allow towing of vehicles within 24 hours. This is consistent with the city's past practice. All right, well, yeah, Councilman you can, Pratt had. Well, since you addressed me, I'd like to be able to respond. Um, that that that's your position, Steve. I can't I can't tell you how you approach it or how you look at it. I can only tell you how I see it. Um, so I'm I'm not gonna you know question your motives. Uh, I, I will take you at your word. But this is how I see it, and I. Regardless of how you see it, it, I think that this legislation has an inordinate impact on people that we don't intend to affect. And if for any other reason than that, I think that this legislation should, should not uh, be approved, but I would like to see other types of legislation uh, put forward. This, this just so you uh, recall it, Joe, this, this arises from a memo from the police commissioner to the city manager regarding a, a number of complaints that have been received over a period of time. The memo uh, may have been in one of the earlier packets, but this is a, mm -hmm. this is a, a request from the commissioner, or a recommendation from the commissioner, that consideration be given to adding a provision to the city code in order to close the gap with the state law and facilitate a more effective response to residents' complaints. So, um, I, I, Kevin, whether, I whether, whether, you, whether you take that at face value or not, all I can tell you is that, that our response in, in our department was simply to to draft the law that covered the gap that exists. I also understand from the city manager that there really haven't been complaints about this sort of thing other than the one instance that well, I'm referring to. And it, I guess to Kevin's point, it didn't originate with the city council. It originated through the police department. George? Well, I haven't talked to the, to the police commissioner. I haven't talked to uh, the city uh, uh, manager, and I haven't talked to the corporation council, but I've thought about where we're at. And um, when I park my car on my street, I park my car in the same place. And as I understand this uh, law, as it's written now, 
if a policeman drove by my car, uh, by my house tonight at midnight and observed that that car was parked uh, in a spot and then came by uh, at midnight, uh, 24 hours thereafter, 48 hours thereafter that, he theoretically could ticket me in tow. So I don't support this law as it's written now. I would love to see some other examples of other um, how other communities deal with this issue. You know, parking is an issue, uh, but this is, you know, I thought about what other council people said um, about, you know, how this could really be applied to numerous areas of Rye where people park on the street. And, and I thought about in my own circumstance, my own particular personal habit is when I park on the street, I tend to park on the same spot on Clark Lane. Theoretically, a uh, police officer working the midnight shift driving by could observe that the same automobile was in the same spot 20, 24, 48 hours successive, unbeknownst to him that I had moved it during the course of the day. So um, I just, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm in, I'm open to other examples or further uh, education on the subject, but uh, as it's written now, uh, I'm not there. I, I actually, that's a good point, George. I didn't focus on the enforcement aspect of it, but I, but I have actually spoken with enforcement officials in other communities and been told that enforcement of this is a nightmare because essentially what you're asked to do is have someone go by and chalk mark a wheel. You know, otherwise there's no real way to figure out whether, you know, it, it's, it's uh, in violation or not. So for what it's worth, I, I, I agree with that as well. Other council members? Yes, how would the police determine that the car had been sitting there for two days? Just like they do the two-hour parking downtown before we chalk. Or chalk mm -hmm. or mark it in some way. Yeah, I and mean, they would have to do that in order to prove that they didn't that just be, pick on somebody's car that happened to be showing up already. I suppose they could do it by, by witness and complaint, too. Okay. Uh, Kathy? Uh, I, I am going to echo what George was saying, um, having lived at Blindbrook Lodge, where I had the ability to walk to work, and during the summer months when we were allowed to park on the street, there were probably times when I had my car in the same legal parking space overnight, um, repeatedly, you know, few, probably several days in a row without using my car. So I, am, I would be concerned for those residents that are either parking on the Boston Post Road or Milton Road, who are living in an apartment, maybe commuting to the city, not using their car maybe, you know, a few times a week. And I, I think this has some, some real issues there. Andy. Uh, I, both George and Catherine are essentially uh, I think restating and probably doing a better job of stating what I brought up in our July 15th meeting when we first discussed this, which was the situation that I was in as an apartment dweller quite often as well, which is when you're, you know, your employer asks you to shoot out of town on an overnight trip that turns into a two or three day thing courtesy of clients or weather. And my car would have been hauled any number of times in those situations. And I think that was one of the components of where Joe was coming from. And um, I will also reinforce the, 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 what we've just heard that the, the genesis for this uh, at least as it came to my attention, this was in our June 26th package in the form of a memo from the commissioner and it cited complaints he'd received and I think that's where it kicked off. I understand how, um, you know, I understand, you know, coverage and belief that it is, you know, that it is kind of a spot legislation intended to affect only one party. And um, I know it to be born of the commissioner's memo. So. I will struggle to support this thing, and I, I would either suggest that we rethink it or call it to a vote so we can see where we can net out. Well, I think we should just table it because I'm hearing a, uh, at least a majority there. I mean, this, this was not a council proposal, so um, so we will table and move to the next agenda. Mm -hmm. Oh, you certainly can. Come on. Mr. Mayor, I think that you could paint this law any color you'd like, and I think it's directly pointed at me. There's an easier way. <clears throat> if I believe that you and Mr. Plunkett, from the onset of this, 
from the onset of this Hen Island thing have tried to suppress it like there were no issues on Hen Island. If you would enforce the laws that are on the books in the city of Rye that protect the people and the environment, we'll get rid of the car. We'll get rid of Mr. Floaty, and you'll get rid of me from your meetings. We'll save the, the city tons of time, tons of embarrassment. All you have to do is enforce the laws. Instead of changing and adding new laws to get rid of my car, take the laws that you have on the books, enforce them, get rid of the sewage and the potable water issues on Hen Island like you did with the health and safety issues that you said weren't there for two years and then all of a sudden they developed. Enforce the laws and we'll all go away. I'm happy to see that the car aggravates you. I'm happy to see that you're upset it doesn't, about it. it, it doesn't, I'd, I'd it, like to know, I'd like to know, maybe you can tell us how many people complained about this car that aren't board members. Would you know that figure? Why don't I start where you started? You know, it seems, Mr. Uh, Tartaglione, that you come back to this community even when Mr. Colwell sent out inspectors and they wrote tickets for things that were worthy of writing tickets for and made decisions not to write tickets for things that weren't worthy of writing tickets for. But even when that enforcement occurred, you continued the sort of over-the-top statements or whatever. Uh, this proposal did not come from me. It did not come from the council. It came from our police commissioner based upon a ambiguity in state law that many municipalities have corrected. Uh, but uh, in terms of uh, silencing you, we've given you plenty of time at many of our meetings to state whatever you wanted to state it. And, and, and so I, I don't think that we have uh, encumbered your ability to, to say things here. Um, but we do enforce the law. We do send the inspector out there. The question I think needs to be asked at a certain point and it has been mentioned in the past, and we've had some people, some of your neighbors from Hen Island here before, is this really about the environment, or is this about a vendetta or grudge you may have against your fellow property owners on Hen Island? It's about the environment, I, it's about I, the health and the I safety the, of my family, I, I have the floor right now. Oh, you asked me a question, I, I, I'm, I'm not responding to it. When I'm done, you can respond. But the, the question, when we, when we had a number of people who also own property on Hen Island, is they came and said, that isn't what this is about. This is about some interpersonal conflict between you and some of the neighbors there, and, and that you are now after them, and you're going to torment them, and you're going to torment this community. Come to our meetings, bring, bring all sorts of bizarre things to the meetings, and, and, and uh, affect the decorum of these meetings. And uh, so the public will judge whether they like what you do or that they don't like what you do, but the city manager and the building inspector have gone out there and enforced the law. So don't say they haven't enforced it. You may not like their answer because they're maybe not writing all the tickets you think should be written, but they're the objective inspector. You're not. You're somebody involved in a dynamic on an island off the shore of Rye. The floor is yours. Thank you, sir. The reason why we have this situation is because for two years, the city of Rye has made statements that there were no issues on Head Island. No building issues, no safety issues, no propane issues, no sewage issues. And then all of a sudden, two years later, the city sends another inspector out, the same inspector that was out there the first time. The same inspector that I witnessed was, was willing to go along with Westchester County and close the island down. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, now we have, we have uh, laws. We have violations. So in the city agreeing for two years that there were no problems out there, the health commissioner wrote a letter to the judge in the case, and the judge dismissed that case based on that health commissioner's statements that the city of Rye concurred with. Now you want a health commissioner to go back to the judge and say, oh, I made a mistake. I lied. I didn't tell the truth. We're, we're, you know, He's not going to do that. We're, we're not, He's we're, already, He's in trouble we're, if he does that. You know, you, you, as I've said to you in previous meetings, if you have a, a, a squabble with the county health department, go to county board of legislators meetings, go to the county executive's office, go to the county health commissioner. I don't know why you're here bothering the people in the city of Rye at our meeting time when you're fight with the county. All I know is when Frank Colross came back as city manager, he said, 
the inspections had not happened to date, which was not what the council had previously been informed, and immediately sent the inspectors out, and the council supported that. So it was done. The tickets that should have been written were written. Um, it, not only that, there was a continuing dialogue between the attorney for your neighbors on Hen Island about compliance, working with the building department to clear up those sorts of issues, and so they tried to be cooperative. And we have tried to be responsive, and we found out the inspections had not been done. They were done, and, and that's where we sit today. So you can continue to come back. I'm not really sure why. I think you should be going to Martin, uh, the, the uh, county office building on Martin Avenue and bring, bring the road show there. Here's, where, here's why I keep coming back, because I pay my taxes to the city of Rye. The city of Rye started this problem. You and Mr. Plunkett, in, in the onset, before there was even any litigation, were the ones to say that there were no problems on Hen Island. And, and we've all seen the email from Christian uh, to it, Paul Shute it, it, to, say, it, it, to say that there were no problems on Hen Island. So you started the problem, not me. Uh, I only complained about the problem. Uh, I only come here and ask you to enforce the laws. And, and, and that, that, that is do. what we've done. And we received reports from the city manager at the time. And we've received updated reports from our current city manager and we've responded to that. So that's where we are. I think we're done now. We've tabled this item. We appreciate your coming. Uh, and uh, But I, I'd say there are other buildings and other television shows that you could appear on that maybe are more responsive to your problem. That's the county health department. That's the county government. We have business to do here and we're going to do it. Can you tell me why I've invited everyone on the board out to Hen Island to see the sewage and potable water issues? Could you tell me why no one's responded and come out to see him? Because if you think if you think that there's no issues out there, I'm going to tell you again, there are issues out there, and they do need to be addressed. We're not enforcement officers. We sent our building inspector out there. You, we spent our we sent our fire inspector out there. That's who writes the tickets. We don't write tickets. The county the county has said that there are sewage problems out there. They just issued two notices for two septic systems. One of them, which was behind my house. So they're they enforcing. Were, no, they only enforced two. And one is behind my house. So I'm glad that I don't have to smell the sewage anymore when I'm cooking on Sunday. But now we have the issue of septic tanks 10 feet from the shoreline that are polluting the Long Island Sound. Now you can spin it any way you want again and say that it's because I have a vendetta for my neighbors. How about it's about the environment? Uh, it's, How about a, it's, your, it's your responsibility to protect the environment. That's the oath you took to enforce the laws. Why aren't you doing it? We are doing it. Our building inspector has been out there. You're They've not doing enforced, it, Mr. Mayor. Pardon me? You're not doing it. Okay, well, you have an opinion, but we have a building inspector. He's a professional. I'm not a building inspector. I'm not going to pretend to be a building inspector, and neither is anyone on this city council. There's a county health department. There's a city building inspector. They write their tickets. There is a process. And so, uh, you know, the, the personal stuff, you lose me on it because none of it's personal to me. I'm just trying to conduct a meeting, get the business of the city done, and, and uh, the comments about the vendetta, those weren't my words. Those were the words of your neighbors who came here and spoke to these meetings. Why don't you repeat my words, Mr. Mayor, about, about pollution and environmental injustice? Why don't you repeat my why words? Why do I have to repeat your words? You're saying them right now. Why do you have to repeat their words? They're not here. Oh. So you're, you're their defendant? I'm, I'm just stating for the record a reminder of what the dynamics to this issue to, may or may not be. To bring People the can judge for themselves. Bring the dynamics full circle, sir. <clears throat> Instead of changing the law to get rid of my car, enforce the laws that are on the books, and we'll all go away. Well, that's what they've done. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move to uh, the next agenda item, which is uh, residents who would like to be heard on matters that do not appear on the agenda. Hearing none. Hearing none, we will move to the item number seven, with, which is an authorization for the city manager in, to enter into a memorandum of understanding for pur purchase of 600 Milton Road, otherwise known as the Bird property, and to adopt a resolution to amend the city budget uh, uh, for that. And um, I'm going to begin and just sort of provide some background of where we are, and then I'm going to invite Ann Stillman, who is president of the uh, Friends, uh, sorry, the Committee to Save the Bird Homestead, um, to also uh, present.